The following program will make you want to grow things and experience new and wonderful dreams about your plants, your garden, and garden design. Listener participation is always strongly advised. And welcome to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101. To contact us live this evening by telephone in the Toronto GTA area of Southern Ontario, Canada, dial 905 725 1907. Toll free anywhere else in North America, 1 866 905 7325. Send us an email right now direct to Joanne and Matthew. Our email address is in studio101 at gmail.com. And now, right to your host of Down the Garden Path. Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Thank you very much, Gary. Welcome, Matthew. Hey, Joanne. Welcome, everyone, to Down the Garden Path here on another cold, chilly, chilly, chilly Mm. Monday evening. Um, Here on Down the Garden Path, this is where we discuss down-to-earth tips and advice for your plants, gardens, and landscapes. We think it is important and possible to have great gardens that are low-maintenance, And I am Joanne Shaw, landscape designer and owner of Down to Earth Landscape Design for the past 10 years. It is currently a design-only business here east of the GTA, although I announced last week that I'm going to get into uh, premium garden services Mm -hmm. as well. And with me is Matthew Dressing. Hey, everyone. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I am Matthew Dressing, a local garden center employee and (laughs) all-around landscape and uh, horticulturist. Owner operator of Natural Affinity Designs again here in Oshawa, servicing uh, Durham region, and I'm just kind of starting on my design journey. So I've got a, uh, a good colleague to help guide me, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and friend. I yes, yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 uh, it's me. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we enjoy doing down the garden path each week with you, bringing you interesting, relevant, and helpful topics to help you achieve a great garden. So we're learning right there with you from each other, from our research, and from our guests that join us here. We welcome your questions via social media, emails, and uh, this evening calls. Yes. Well, lots. And the season feels like it's all of a sudden come to a halt with uh, with the chilliness of yeah. the day. Up to this point, it's been uh, so lovely. It's beautiful. Place. I know. It's like beyond lovely. Yes. Um, although I don't know if any of our listeners um, follow me on social media. I know I planted a garden like, well, I placed all the plants today. The contractor said I didn't have to do that. I was prepared. I was ready. I told them I even left my shovel on site last week. Um, I was pretty prepared to do the shoveling. <laughs> but uh, there were enough other guys there that they didn't need my help. So I placed all the plants for the garden, and uh, yeah. So October 30th, unbelievable. Unreal. The day before Halloween, and you know, planted. I know, <laughs> I know. So, uh, so yeah, so that's what's, you know, lots of happening this time of year. And if our listeners note, this is the last Monday of October. So mm. this is when we talk about November in the garden. Right. Right, our little uh, regular episode. Monthly thing. Yeah, monthly thing. <laughs> a little weird doing like a November in the garden being so warm. I know, I know. Usually, I think, yeah, we would talk in past years. November in the garden was would probably be a very different show. Right. This this year, most leaves are still on the trees. All the trees can be green. Yeah, 
And uh, so it really is, uh, you know, we, when we talked about it in our prep for the show, too, it's a little bit of a October in the Garden delayed repeat. <laughs> 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 but uh, we have lots of other things that I'm sure we can cover. But if you as listeners have questions or have um, comments or any, you know, anything you're curious about in your own garden yeah. or that you're reading about in the, you know, anything, um, yeah. please uh, feel free to send us an email. Uh, we'd love to hear from you or post something on social media. Um, we kind of try to check our phones when we're, yes. uh, when we're we try to multitask. Um, but yeah, so uh, so what else are we going to talk about? So we, or the garden center has anything, you know, we like to talk about. You know, what I always I'm always curious to know what are what are uh, customers looking for or what any issues. Yeah, you know, they're right now they're still looking for because we're kind of in that in between time. The fall planters are kind of looking shabby and mm -hmm. and ready to turn over, but it is still too warm to do the winter greens. Mm. So everyone's kind of searching for what do I put out there? And they have dinner parties and you know Halloween and things like that. Yeah. So we're kind of in the in between there. Greens are just slowly arriving and being ready. Uh, on the insect disease front, everything's kind of cooled off and quieted down. The crazy hornets have vanished and mm. a lot of people coming in with uh, leaf diseases still that maybe they've left to the end or they're coming in for their dormant spray kits because you know, they had an issue or a fungal or a disease issue earlier in the year. Right. And now's the time as the leaves start to drop. It's time to get ready to... To oh, be ready okay. for that. I think it's going to be a short window if it drops because yeah. it's turning so quickly. Because mm -hmm. um, you can usually do it as long as it's above five degrees and a gradual decrease. But right. I think we're going to... See, and I thought we only did that in the spring, but we can't. you can't do that in the fall? Yeah, you can do that in the fall too. And the the Lime Sorrel Floor Hort Oil Combo actually does, which is the dormant spray kit if you're right. aware, uh, actually has a summer application rate too, but you remove certain plants from it that you can't use on it. Okay. Because when in leaf, it'll damage all the leaves. Right. Yeah. So what would if uh, what would someone be spraying the dormant kit for right now? Yeah, if you have any overwintering insects that you know that were on on your if you have scale, for example. Okay. Scale uh, on euonymus, scale on. Yep, you could have okay. oyster shell scales or other soft body scales, magnolia scale. Things like that. Okay. Any just overall general like leaf scabs or fungal issues. If you've been hit really hard with powdery mildew, that'll help reduce that. Okay. Yeah, get rid of all of those things. Mm. So yeah, as long as I always say, you know, let the leaves drop. Let those leaf scars close over so you don't have little spots of, you know, the leaf scars make little right. funny things on branches, little mm -hmm. droplets get, and then lime sulfur can burn it. So give it two weeks for them to callus over and close. Okay. Um, and paint it on every two weeks as long as it's above five degrees. All yeah. right. And then you wait. And then, like you said, in the spring, right? Once yeah, it's kind of like that. You usually get a same thing. It's usually short, too. We have a short window, right? Very February, short March. Window. Yeah. Yes. And, for, and then that would be like fruit trees, um, right. other ornamentals. Fruit trees, trees and shrubs. People have, like, you can do it on your roses. Okay. Things like that. Okay. In yeah. the And not now, but in the spring. In the spring, yeah. Okay. Again, when it's five degrees. And then the spring usually stops it because of the... Uh, the leaves or the flowers come out, and then right, you have right. Because my roses, my shrub rose, my no, my carpet. Let me complain. Sorry, carpet <laughs> roses. Those are the only ones I have. Are in full leaf, in full bloom. Yeah. Are absolutely gorgeous. They're stunning. Out there. I know. It's like I want them to go dormant. <laughs> <laughs> I want them because I want to move them. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. and I don't know if I've left it too late now. Right, and we were going to talk about that too. Excellent, good. Part of our October thing is waiting till the end to move. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, when is the end coming? Though that's the challenge, <laughs> and right? that's so the challenge. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we don't know when the end is when happening. Is the end? So although you know we may be approaching it, I think approaching so. it. So uh, so yeah, nothing. I did do some transplant. I did because I've been waiting for the roses, but there was a couple other things. I transplanted a peony and a, because um, we've told everybody that they can do that now, mm -hmm. and another shrub of another dwarf viburnum. I um, I uh, transplanted that into a new lo new location, but really it's it's the roses that I've been kind of like just patiently it's waiting for, <laughs> and uh, so it's not happening. It's not happening yet, so uh, so we'll see. We'll see what will happen. But that, that's pretty much, you know, I did do the dormant spray and then I loaned, I loaned, I gave the other mm. sponge to a neighbor and he did his. The nematodes. The nematodes, yes. Yeah. What did, oh, I said dormant, said dormant spray. Sorry, <laughs> nematodes. The nematodes. So, um, so, yeah, so I'd say my garden is kind of on hold. It's finally looking like fall. And, uh, yeah. Nice. So, yeah. 
My yeah, mine's yeah, kind of going to sleep too. Yes, Planted your containers, a few perennials. Yep. Okay. Getting rid of the uh, containers and things like that. Um, I, I have a tip for just doing the greens if okay. you haven't gotten rid of your fall containers yet. Um, yeah. So just kind of cleaning things up. The leaves are falling. Finally, the squirrels and the chipmunks are becoming a little less active. Okay. So I'm itching to plant some tulips, but yeah. Other than that, it's kind of. Fall is on her way, slowly yeah. cleaning up all these leaves. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't know what's going to take, because it was really windy today, too, but nothing was coming down. No, no there were very little leaf fall. Yeah. yeah, it was surprising. Yeah. 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 It's, oh, it's surprising, I guess. More unusual. Yes. Was the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. What else is happening? What else is happening? Well, that was my garden. Yeah. <laughs> How about Nana's so, garden? Yeah, and, and Nana's garden too. Yeah, I, that was the mainly the one that I was oh, talking okay. about. But okay. Yeah, in my balcony, I'm just kind of closing off my pots. Um, I've got my garlic in, getting that to grow. Are you going to do it in pots? Yeah, I'm going to try Ooh. it in pots. Yeah, um, Larry, a mutual friend of mine and Joanne's, yes, gave us uh, or gave me some European garlic that. Oh, this he is got his famous garlic. Yes, yeah. Yes. So I've got two bulbs that I've okay. broken and planted. So I'm eager to see how they're going to go through. Okay, and you yeah. know what? I have a question for you too. Is I um. I have I had done up a couple of pots, so they're uh, ceramic pots that I know I need to bring in, mm. and I did um, succulents in them. So I made these two gorgeous, small and medium, especially after my trip to uh, my, on the garden fling. Yeah. I made these pots, and so now, and I know I, ha- I think I have a sunny enough window that they're. I'm sure they're not going to like love it inside, but. I think they'll be okay. Yeah. Um, and I know I started, so at first I thought, oh, okay, I'll put them in garbage bags because it's getting rid of the insects, right? Mm. So um, then like all these earwigs come out and then I'm like, oh man. So it's like, and it's, will insecticide do the trick? I move them into the garage feeling like I would, sl- like so that way I can slowly move them into the house. Right. Um, but should I insecticide all some soap? Is that really my best thing? Yeah, um, for the smaller soft body, those common ones, I would do the insecticidal soap. Okay. If it was bigger things like millipedes and earwigs, I like to use uh, Endol. Oh, okay. Just for the pyrethrins, because they are. It's the only one that we have out there that'll kill the Japanese beetle. Okay. So it tends to kill the heavier bodied shelled. But you have to see like them because I don't see them. Like and, I just think there must be in the soil. Right. So then you've got to spray right the, to hit. You got to shoot to kill. Okay. Right. So then if you don't have that, um, if you've got like the gap around the pot, for example, you know, like the soil contracts a bit and they tuck themselves in there, you could just spray it on the edge and have it kind of dribble down. Oh, okay. And hopefully they get poisoned or sick and slowly die that way. Okay. Uh, Or the other thing is diatomaceous earth. So mixing in the diatomaceous earth in the sides where they may be crawling, so they'll either crawl through it or eat it, uh, or the same thing at the bottom of the hole. Okay. You know, pushing some in there or even just soaking into the bottom. Okay. It's kind of, you have to get them that so way. So I should pick up some Andal then. Yeah, because right. I didn't, I thought I had something. I didn't have anything in stock in, in my at house in stock. At house, yeah. So I had to buy something. So I wanted to find out what was the best thing to buy. Yeah. So Andal. Yeah. Okay. And then other things I like to say is, yeah, like they're usually earwigs or little pill bugs that crawl in the holes, right? For sure. For sure. Because, yeah, they were just sitting on the, like, I have, like, natural stones on the other sides of my steps, and that's yeah. where they were sitting. So yeah. it wasn't like they were raised on something or on a table or anything. They were definitely, you know, ground level. Right. Yeah. So um, yeah. I've even said to people, um, you know, just taking, like, a wire, like an old coat hanger or something sharp, and just kind of etching in around the holes, poking them in, because you'll probably puncture them okay. or stab them, and then they can't move, and they'll just die, and the plant will eat them or they'll well, wash out. Anybody just <laughs> tuning into for that last statement yeah. will wonder, what the heck are we talking about, right? We're walking into a conversation. Yes. Um, yeah, yes. or even doing that with just an old kind of sharp garden knife just around the sides, just kind of crush them and okay. kill them that way, or flooding okay. them. Well, well, you know, it's tricky because it's succulents too, right? So, like, they're cascade, like, it's kind of tricky, and they're very, they're very fragile too. Right. So, uh, so yeah, so I could see kind of poking, but I think the, the end all might be the best thing to do. Yeah, I like the end all. I mean, okay. if it kills a Japanese beetle, yeah, she's pretty much going to kill them all. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right. Um, so. Break time and then yeah, maybe we'll get I think into so. so we're going to, yeah, we've got lots to talk about as far as November in the garden. So, um, yeah. So why don't we pause for a commercial break here on uh, Down the Garden Path on Reality Radio 101.
Looking for a quick, easy to apply and all natural fertilizer to use in your vegetable and flower gardens or for your fruit trees? Why not work with Mother Nature? Layer Hand Manure is a terrific fertilizer and this is what Actisol does by transforming the manure from their egg farms into an efficient fertilizer. The manure is dried using a technology that harnesses the heat given off by the hands. No other heat source is needed. Actisol is easy to use, safe for the environment, children and pets. You can purchase Actisol products at your local garden center or order in bulk. For more information, visit www.acti-sol.ca. Actisol, the mother hen fertilizer. If you want your fruit trees to live a long and healthy and productive life, it's essential that you water them properly when they're young. You need to water slowly and deeply so the moisture seeps into your young tree's expanding root system. That sounds easy enough, but you'd be surprised at how often the water you provide for your trees just rolls away, leaving its young roots high and dry. That's why we at TreePans.com have worked with orchards to develop a product that ensures all the water gets to your tree's root system. Our expandable tree pans funnel rain or irrigation water to the drip line of your young trees. Additionally, tree pans eliminate weed growth under the tree canopy, as well as protect your trees from mowers, tractors, and weed whips. Tree pans are used in orchards, city parks, and in residential yards. And once your young tree is established, you can move your tree pans to another young tree. Learn more about tree pans at treepans.com. The following program will make you want to grow things and experience new and wonderful dreams about your plants, garden, and garden design. Listener participation is always strongly advised. Welcome back to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101. To get on board, send us an email right now. Our email address is instudio101 at gmail.com. And now, right back to your hosts of Down the Garden Path. Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Down the Garden Path on Reality Radio 101. I just wanted to start off by saying uh, hi to Andy. He wrote in uh, wishing us happy Halloween, and it's very cold. He's writing in from Belleville, Ontario. Yeah, that would be cold. And my sister lives out in in Belleville. So, okay. Thank um, you for listening. Uh, exactly. Thank yeah. you very much for listening, Andy, and happy Halloween to uh, you and yours as well. Yes, and we have another. We can start the second half of the show with, uh, well, not really the second half, still. <laughs> <laughs> next part of the show with a question from Blaine. Um, he, uh, they, he is asking about shrub roses. Um, is it time to now to prune them, and if so, how far back? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I no. I mean, you don't really need to prune yeah. them really at all. Um, I, I feel the same, unless you like, unless there's like a couple like huge long limbs, right? Blaine that that are like gonna be you know crushed in the snow. But if if it's all fairly compact, like uh, there's lots of varieties of shrub roses, so some get bigger than others, right? Exactly. Um, but my advice is not to. Ditto. Yeah, I mean, unless it's really causing you an issue, or you know, it's just really ugly and misshapen, or you know, you know, you've got a lot of dead in there. She's happy just doing her thing, and she's gonna perform without any touching, like low maintenance rows. Yeah, because they're pretty hardy. They're very hardy. Yeah. yeah. Now, anything? Does there need to be anything mulched at the base or anything? Because they're again, they're hardy. They're stocks. super hardy. Yeah, and you don't even have to protect them like other roses. Mm-hmm. Prune them. Just enjoy their rose hips and. Keep out any dead just for general health. And yes. Enjoy, yeah. So, yeah, unless she's jumping out in your way, Blaine, 
Um, yeah, you're pretty good. Just to kind of let her do her thing. Yeah, and I think the bonus there is the rose hips. You know, you can get some nice fall color when it's right. it starts to lose its leaves. The beautiful winter interest. You can yeah. collect them for your winter urns if you do that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, depends how thorny your, your, oh, yeah, your rose is. Little, <laughs> yeah, might <laughs> not be so. An iron gauntlet just to get them. <laughs> yeah, so hope that helps. I hope you're okay with that. Let us know. Uh, so, yeah. So that's uh, one of the things. I mean, so as far as roses go in the November garden. Yeah. I mean, unless you've got really a real one that you need to protect or needs cutting back, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it's going to be that time. You do want to protect some of the grafted ones for sure. Right. You want a light frost for them to start. You don't want to get them too early. Mounded up because the, you know, the mice and the other rodents. Yes, move right in. <laughs> move right in, exactly. And then you're going to damage them anyways. Yeah. But, mm, okay. Other than that, we'll just wait till a good frost and, and prune them back depending on which one they are. And it's been varied. That Usually we, when we when we get a frost, we all get it. But we were like, I haven't had one in Pickering. No. But I'm hearing that, you know, Oshawa and east of here and north of here certainly has gotten one. Yeah, I've gotten one at the apartment. But my grandmother, who's a little further east where I garden she was protected enough that our garden didn't get a frost uh, and it was it was very hit and miss where she was in that area yeah so, yeah like look for like a real like we've got a frost advisory we call it a killing frost thing. yeah because my nice my annuals frost. are still good like you know my begonia I don't want to take my begonias out because they're still looking great yeah I, which is yeah yeah in fact I planted uh, coincidentally planted orange begonias at my front door and they're looking great with my pumpkins oh, <laughs> so nice. it's still looking good so yeah, it seems very very strange for it sure. Is, it is yeah. weird. Yeah, I mean, I've even got like impatience still mm. the wallerine in window boxes. Okay, and they're, they're doing fine. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So this is a very different November in the garden show. It is absolutely, absolutely. So should we still be watering? I know we've nagged everybody to death nag, about this rule. Nag, nag. Yeah, and if you haven't been watering or you think you've been watering lightly, still for sure. Um, make sure, I mean, people are still at the garden center buying evergreens and planting oh, them boy. and yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, make sure they're very well watered in, watering first, soaking them once a week till that ground freezes. Okay. Uh, you want to make sure that they go to sleep because the wind is just as desiccating and destructive as the sun itself. So the sun vanishes, so the drought's not there, mm -hmm. but the wind is going to dry you out. Mm. Yeah. That's just, interesting. Mm, just kind of like when we go out on a windswept day and, you know, we get the red cheeks and then yeah, we start the dry to peel lips a bit. and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So imagine, yeah, your skin is leaf thin mm -hmm. and you don't have any water to quickly replace it. So that's where you get that, you know, the evergreens especially. They like to show their damage the next season. So you wake up in spring, the cedars mm -hmm. made it all the way through. Yeah. Beautiful. I loved it. Oh, the winter didn't do a thing. It gets warm and suddenly she burns on one side instantly. And that's her winter wind damage showing through. Yeah. And Japanese maples too, I would think that's something that, you know, they're, they need, they do need a bit of extra moisture. For sure. And, um, and you're not going to see the damage. You're not, it's not going to die like now. It's going to die in the spring. Right. Right. Yeah, um, I know I, I've there. talked about my addiction to my tree gator. <laughs> and uh, so I have, a, I have um, three Japanese maples. So I have a butterfly Japanese maple, which gets fairly neglected. Like it's got lots of other plants around it that are established. And so I kind of forget to baby that one a bit. Right. Um, but I did, I kind of had to like really, it's very multi-stemmed kind of close to the ground. So it was quite a t tight to get the gator around it, but I did give it a deep watering. <laughs> um, but I've got one of those gold ones that, you know, like full moon, like oh, where it's yeah. got, and this is the second year in a row where, and I'm wondering if this is a water issue because it too is around established plants. Um, it, cause it, because it's gold, it gets a great fall color, but mine gets partly fall color and partly they just curl up. And go, yeah, that could and brown. Be for sure. So is that is, have I not uh, watered it enough? Yeah, or it just gets super windy and suddenly, and yeah. she starts to burn out that way too. Because mm -hmm. yeah, it should. It looks like it has such great potential, and then it's like, oh man. And last year I thought I lost it, but it did come back, and uh, yeah, and they don't even fall off the tree; they just kind of brown up and stay on the tree. Yeah, and that's a sign for your trees too. A healthy tree will drop its leaves Ooh. even when brown. Okay. Uh, stressed or a damaged and usually dead tree will hold on because it's the closing of those petioles on the leaves and okay. her drawing in her energy that she pinches them off as she closes them okay so when they're dead though that usually that opening is also dying or stressed oh, and it just sits okay. there 
So I need to treat so, Gator that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Give her some more trinket. We you know we should have him on the show. <laughs> yeah, I know because I keep promoting that like yeah. crazy. I get nothing for this. Let me just tell you. I just think I think the convenience is brilliant. It's a great I really product. do. I, I think it's a great product. So that's why I keep talking about it. And it's and like I said, I put it around my hydrangeas. Like I put it in loosely and in, in you know definitely. I think there's lots of purposes for it. So uh, so for sure, <laughs> for sure. Um, so what else should we be doing this time of year? Yeah, if you haven't yet already, we can continue to add calm compost and manure and other organic matters to to your veggie gardens uh to any other gardens that maybe needs a little extra nutrition or building up as well Uh, i know a lot of people that i've been talking to in the garden center lately they're actually still pulling weeds out of their veggie gardens and they haven't turned them just yet so okay still time to kind of do that as well you can add and things like that um Another thing would be, sorry, I just lost my thought totally. That's okay. Uh, and just thinking about the veggie garden, people are asking for gardening spaces about corn gluten. Oh, so they're getting okay. ready for putting soils and things down, but they want to make sure that the weeds don't come back. Mm-hmm. So they're kind of half and half about the landscape fabric. Please, God, no. No, exactly. <laughs> sorry. <right. laughs> I no. said that out loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <Outdoor first. sighs> But it, and it's not as breathable as we think, right? It's not like burlap. Sorry, are they talking about putting the landscape fabric in their vegetable gardens, right? To just prevent the leaves, to prevent weeds. the weeds and and other and then things. next year they would take it off. No, they're kind of a few of them are thinking oh, they're just going to leave no, them. No, 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 no. Right. Okay, right. Yeah, no. I like landscape fabric under rocks or somewhere. Right. That's really the only purpose. Right. And even that, it doesn't work because I, yeah, yeah, it doesn't work. No, no, because it just collects the leaf debris. <laughs> and I know we so badly want it to work, everybody. We really do, yeah. but it just doesn't work. No, it's glorified it, plastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's it doesn't work because I know I I ended up moving um, some river rock from one area to because I was expanding the garden and it was when I was doing that trans and I did that like weeks and weeks ago and dug up all the river rock and lots had sunk in or whatever and so then this yesterday when I was digging in the and moving the peony and I'm digging down I'm like what am I hitting yeah landscape fabric <laughs> like a foot down so it has sunk Jeez. you know so really like yeah. it you know it's under so there was a large rock there so it's it was like a large rock and then river rock. Oh, okay. So it's still underneath the large rock. So I have to go in and cut it because I've moved the river rock. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I wish I wish I could say it works. I wish it would make our life easier. I really do. Yeah. Um, but it, it really doesn't solve. It just creates more issues than it does, than it does solve. And honestly, please believe us from from land, from gardeners. Like we're, you know, yeah. we've been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, so please uh, believe us. It doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work. So I was saying, too, if you're adding things. Um, corn gluten, mm-hmm. right? You can turn your garden or put down your garden to bed, but now is the time to add extra corn gluten down. It'll start to dissolve and put in the protein into the soil. Okay. It'll winter and give you a stronger shield when you add more in the spring and prevent the weeds. And a lot of people don't think to use it in your garden. Right. I wouldn't have thought that. Right. And it'll work in any open soil. You might need a little more because the grass plants are going to help you crowd out the weeds and fight that battle. But yeah, adding corn gluten on your finished layer, kind of like the last thing you're going to do, it'll be watered in by some, you know, winter rains and melting snow. Okay. Put a little bit more on. It'll prevent any weed seeds from your open soil as your bed's... Kind of try to wake up. So if you're so now's a good time to put it on our lawns. And if you've already got, because I'm thinking about yeah. that. If I bought a big bag, there's a big bag, and if I buy it, I don't have that much grass, but I could put it in the gardens too. Yeah, put it in your gardens. Put it in the edges of your gardens. A lot of people, you know, where even in the summer where they're edging their garden, yeah. it's open soil. Yeah, throw it in like a foot deep until you or until you get the perennial and annual cover. Okay. And the weeds will stop growing on those little borders or those oh, weird open Oh, that is a fabulous spots. idea. Yeah, because it, anything that starts, it'll it'll stop. Excellent. Oh, great question. So we have a new question from Pebla. But yeah, Pebla. And she's asking, um, or he's asking, my apologies. Uh, what time is the best time to put fertilizer down on your lawn? And yeah, not what time. What is the best for? Oh, what is the best? My apologies. I know Matthew's not like. Re- oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm not <laughs> a big cue cards. Yeah. <laughs> Can you highlight, Gary? That, you're gonna have to make that font bigger, Gary. Yeah. I know we have to increase it. <laughs> Where are my glasses? <laughs> Uh, what be- is the best fertilizer to put on your lawn? So you know what it, it really comes down to to your choice. When it comes to the lawn, I usually deal with organic, okay. 
Okay. Because you're kind of feeding this natural cycle of things. Right. You can use your, you know, your Scots, your CILs, the common, you know, the miracle Grow kind right. of things out there. They're that synthetic elemental chemical kind of thing. So th- when you're really trying to give a burst of green and feed things in, I say go, you know, you're more, you're synthetic. Right. You know, it's a quick hit. But it's for fall, we're not really looking for a hit of green necessarily. We just want it to do well over winter. Right. 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 So for right now. Yeah, I guess it's, continue reading, Matthew, for right now. Yeah. So if you do have a weaker lawn, you can do a synthetic, but make sure it's a fall right. fertilizer because it's going to release and give you that burst. And what are the numbers on the fall? Usually like a 10, 0, 16 or 18. You don't okay. want a high first number. Right. Low first number, high, higher or equal last number. Okay. For your lawn. But if you did organic, are the numbers the same? No, the other numbers, again, they're kind of the same in the, the way that they're weighted. So it's like right. a 439. Okay. But it is slower. In the organic, you use the soil microorganisms to break things down, and they release the food. Mm. But the microorganisms themselves do more for your subsoil and, you know, pests and diseases and yes. structure that way. So if you've got a good fat established lawn... Do a nice, right now would be your winter fertilizer. Okay. For organic. For organic and the synthetic. We're going to okay. add our fourth application is right now. Okay. Uh, and yeah, just the organic will take a little bit more time to start. So you'll see its benefits more in the, uh, through the, in the early spring. Right. Yeah. Right. Depending on when you put it And down. I do, I mean, I know, again, we're not uh, paid to do anything or say anything, but I think no. environmentally, you know, there is a case to be had for the organic in the sense that the water, the runoff, that if we get a bad rain, that synthetic fertilizer going into our sewer systems, right? you know, our drainage, that type of thing, um, splashing into our gardens. So, I mean, I think there there really is no downside. I don't see the, down, the organics have come a long way and I yeah. really don't see the downside, especially in the where we want it to be a slow release. Right. You know, I get the people that want the real you know, um, really ex- quick, quick thing burst. in the spring necessarily. I don't get it, but I'll say I get it. But the fall, you know, we're, it's really this lawn's going to sleep anyway. Right. So all we really need to do is add nutrients to the the soil. Right. And, uh, and I think organic's a good way to go. So that's just, again, our two cents. Yeah. Right. And I always think of organics, uh, like I think we, when we think food, right? Right. If we're, we're, if we're damaged, we go to a hospital and what do they do? They give us an IV. Right. And give us stuff. So the synthetic stuff acts so quickly. It's kind of like the lawn getting an IV or a hit, a quick hit of food. Right. Whereas if we are healthy and maintain ourselves regularly, the organic stuff is like a salad. Right. We're going to digest it. We're going to have healthy insides. And overall, we're going to be better. Same with your lawn. Your lawn will green quick up with your organics, but you got to be feeding it and taking care of it properly like we would ourselves. Yeah. And to piggyback on on Pebbles' question, can we do the gluten and then the... Yeah, you can do the fertilizer and the and gluten, gluten at the same time. time. Okay, right. that's not a problem. No, that's Excellent. not a problem. And your winter fertilizer now is going to, you know, whatever gets in there now is going to bolster the roots and the, the grass to get through the winter. But we don't want to be on our lawn in early April when it's squishy. Squishy mm-hmm. soil kills it. So this is also going to finish its feeding in late winter, early spring when you can't get out there. Mm. It's not going to be 100% gone yet. So the roots will use it to wake up. And activate and do its thing when you're not supposed to be there. Excellent. So, Excellent. Well, yeah. that's good to know. So that is the best fertilizer to put down now on our lawn. A brand name, it comes back to whatever you choose. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I hope that helps. Hope that helps. Thank Bella. you for the question. Thank you very much. Um, so I was saying about transplanting. So is it, we're, you know, we're like, we put in a whole garden today. Yeah. Um, so it's still a good time. It's still a good time. Yeah. yeah. We're still okay. Right. Taking as big a root ball as you can, you know, prepping the hole like you would do planting at any other time. Right. Um, she may not actively grow out into it, but those nutrients are going to be there okay. for later, that good soil. Okay. For sure. Excellent. And just keep watering. And again, yeah, keep watering, right? Because if you've transplanted, you're usually cutting back roots, mm-hmm. right? So she's going to need a little bit of extra help. Although I have to, oh, I'll share this on social media later. I, um, to at this install that we're working on, one of the two that I have going on, um, one of the contractors took out a massive, like I'm talking maybe seven feet by six feet, globe spruce. Like globe, no, globe cedar. Sorry, big ball, like globe cedar. Yeah, so he (laughs) took that out. He pulled it out with the machine. You wouldn't believe how little root 
Like yeah. no deep roots, all like little root, like the root ball. You know, he said, I think you could pick it up and plant it. Like it, there was like really no damage. <laughs> it was unbelievable. So I took a picture of it, of the root ball. You couldn't even call it a root ball. Like it really, just, yeah. for the size of this tree, of this evergreen, you couldn't, you it couldn't just, believe it. So gosh. it's incredible. Yeah. It, so I'll tweet that out. That's funny. Yeah. And Larry said that too. Uh, or the yeah. friend again, he, in the windstorm that we had, his uh, 35 foot uh, spruce tree, blue spruce <gasps> tree knocked over. Oh no. Yeah. And he said the root ball was maybe three feet by three feet by three feet. And it was just stuck in the little bed, like where it was. Oh wow. Yeah. This is funny. Wow. That is incredible. Nature just does its thing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, is anything still blue? I mean, I I still have a little bit of cat mint. So I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's finding late summer bloomers is tricky. But I think right. they've all pretty much. You I mean my hydrangeas, of course, are still blooming. The, they're the, still doing. They're, they're oh, well. They've all no new growth is coming. We're, oh, okay. right, no new flowers. But um, yeah. So and my even my I know I was really happy with my anemones. You know, so there's some November stars as you put it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Question mark explanation. Mark, or <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, I mean, I waited uh, and put on Instagram the other day a little Campanula blue uniform, the little clips. OK. Uh, there's a number of those in a garden I saw and they're just filled with flowers and new buds coming. Uh, so, yeah, those longer season ones are still hanging in there. Yeah. 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 My cat mint, my nepeta. The bees are still, yeah, butterflies were gone, but the bees were still uh, in it like crazy. Still all over. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So so that's good. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there's, you know, we've mentioned that before on the show. So the bug beans, the sedums, Ooh. um, goldenrod. I was reading today about the goldenrod, um, being really like that fluff that kind of comes from it. Again, it does not cause, it's not causing you the allergies. That's Correct. ragweed. Goldenrod is fine. But there's a certain kind of, from the seed heads that, a, and I forget the name of the bird that collects that bird, for, that to material for its nest. Oh. Yeah. It was a really interesting article. So, uh, so Yeah. So there's lots of different... To- I have never planted toad lily. I'm kind of curious about that one. I tried that at Nana's, but it was too dry of a shade. Okay. And she didn't winter. Okay. She did the rest of the year. She was okay. Yeah. But she wouldn't winter in it. Yeah. So. My shade is dry too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But they're beautiful. And some are fragrant. So. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. They almost look like they'd be a cool cut flower. Yes. Yes, they do. You know. They do. Yeah. Very yeah. cool orchid-like. Yeah, that would be an interesting yeah. kind of flower. I yeah. wonder if they'd last. Yeah, interesting. I'm going to try that. <laughs> I know, I know. And so in addition to transplanting this time of year... It is approaching, and so I haven't done this yet. I've got, I bought the bed. I bought the. Remember the bulbs I bought when I visited you. Yes. I still have so planting bulbs. So now that the squirrels have kind of settled down a bit, now yeah. you think it's a good, it's a good try. Yeah, yeah, especially your tulips. For okay. Sure. Yeah, wait till the end of October, which it is the very end of October. Yes. Now is a great time to be planting them. Yeah. Okay. Done their foraging. It's getting too cold for them, so they're going to focus elsewhere. So, okay. yeah, go out and plant your tulips. Plant your tulips. Oh, your alliums, or anything your del- else, yeah, anything, your yeah. alliums, your daffodils, yeah. that type of thing. So, for sure. so yeah. that is good. But tulips is a safety kind of reason. If you do it too early, they'll dig them up. Right. Right. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, plenty of times to plant the bulbs. Uh, I remember oh, ten years maybe ago. A little garden center I worked for, we wanted to plant some leftover bulbs. We didn't do it, we didn't do it, we didn't do it. And it was the second week of January. And the ice had barely settled in. So we were able to break through and plant our hillside. Oh, my goodness. Filled with bulbs and they all came up perfect. So. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so not too late yet if you haven't done it. <laughs> oh, no, no, for sure. And I, I'm sure Gary remembers this guest. Um, do you remember when we had the fl- uh, Melanie, the flower farmer? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Melanie. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I follow her on Instagram. You totally have to follow her. Oh. So they, she has a fast video. Of they literally... Um, Delia May Flower Farm. They literally planted seven thousand tulips, oh. and she showed how they did it. Like, oh my goodness! And 7, she had 000? seven. Well, seven thousand in their hoop house, a total yeah. of fifteen thousand. Oh my goodness! I know, and it was it was just incredible to watch. They she works so hard. They are doing oh, such a great job. And it's a small business, as she stressed. Family, you know, and, absolutely. And so she gives very personal attention and everything yeah right? yeah definitely so she just inspires me every time i think i'm having a bad day man she is i know i know like I, I, <laughs> matt's looking at it like isn't it unbelievable that's so that's unreal. all for next year all for uh tulips for next year so a shout out to uh to melanie i hope we can maybe have her back on the show in the spring 
or uh, or in the winter actually, but uh, when she's not as busy, but she's yeah. working so hard and um, shop local for your flowers, everybody. That's my little uh, plug for the day. Hundred. <laughs> yeah, because she's you know out. yeah she's just it's year three for her and the weather has just been you know just challenging. So beautiful. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's impressive. That's I know. I know. Definitely look that guys up. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So, why don't we pause? You want to pause for another commercial break? Oh, yeah. Because uh, time wow. is flying, I know. Whipping by. I know, whipping by. And we've got lots to cover still. We do, we okay. do. Okay. So, we will be right back here on Reality Radio 101. Are you wondering why your life isn't moving in the direction that you want it to? Do you ever hear yourself saying, it's like I'm running into walls or my money flows out as quickly as it comes in? Until about nine years ago, I used to hear myself say those exact words. I could never figure out what was causing these problems or how to fix them. Well, that's until I started to learn about feng shui and how by applying the principles of it to my home or my office, I could in fact help fix those problems and have my life run smoother. Wow. When you book a feng shui consultation with us at Your Spiritual Connection, we will help you to figure out why things aren't working out in your favor, and we will offer simple solutions to help correct the problems, which will in turn help your life to run smoother. Contact Trish John of Your Spiritual Connection at 905-391-8801. To book your feng shui consultation today. For more information on any of our upcoming events and workshops, please visit our website at www.yourspiritualconnection.ca. Your Spiritual Connection, helping you to make the connections in your life. Welcome back to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101. To send us an email, send us an email to this great email address to contact Joanne and Matthew. Our email address is instudio101 at gmail.com. And now, right back to your experts of Down the Garden Path, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Welcome back, everyone, (laughs) to Down the Garden Path on Reality Radio 101. We are talking the November Garden, your do's and don'ts, tips and tricks. That's right. That rock music was kind of revving yes, me up. Yes, got, got, got him all really revved up there. Um, and thank you for our people who've written in already today. That was great that we can help you. So that's what we're here for. So please, that if is. there's any other questions, uh, please uh, write us. We've still got time. Lots to cover. Lots to cover. And I was actually going to ask Gary. Oh, oh Gary. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah, on the spot. Um the emails can guests send pictures? Yes, they can. There you go. So sure, they t- anyone who wants to do that. What Matthew suggested, if you have a problem, of plants. all you need to do is put in a yeah. Well, I'll yeah, put, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, attachment, right? Just oh, like okay. to an email, just an attachment. We can open it up. Oh, sure, that is and you a can great see question. it. Question. Yeah. yeah. So if you've got yeah, or? if you've got a question about weeds That's or great. a spot in your garden, plant ID, plant well, ID, and a video they can send as well as an attachment. Even if someone went video. out in your yard and shot a two minute video and said, "Hi, Joanna Matthew, this weed, I don't know what it is and I don't know how to treat it." We can open that up for you right in the studio as well. We Excellent. Do that that is very cool. That is cool. <laughs> Excellent. Well, okay. So for our listeners. Just so you know. Yeah. So there's a variety of other things. If you do have a question, you can send us a picture. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So what else should we be looking at uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks? Uh, another one that I think is pretty big is, it might take some time, is closing your pond. Ah, Yes. Yes, closing your pond. A lot of people can get, you know, what do I do? What's important? Um, 
So, I mean, we've had Ernest from mm-hmm. Aquascape. On a couple of times. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I looked up some, just some notes that, you know, I had taken and then he had given in the past as we've worked together. Uh, and just some quick things that he's shared with me to, you know, winterize your pond. Um, so, you know, making sure that, you know, we're putting your bed to weather or to your, wow, that got away from me. Putting wow. your pond to bed or sleep. Yes. <laughs> um Removing leaves and debris, so making sure that anything falling from the trees, uh, leaves, debris, sticks, and things like that can get captured. Okay. So there are pond nets that as the leaves start to fall, you can kind of staple around your pond. Okay. Uh, it'll catch all the leaves, and then you basically just pull it off, dispose of all the debris, and it prevents it from getting into your system. So it's not going to get into your ponds and your pumps and things like that. So, which also ties into trimming and any dead or dying foliage. Because all of this stuff it sits there and starts to decompose in the water, which oh, okay. you know encourages the nitrogen cycle right. and can stress the water balance and can harm your uh, other plants, your water chemistry, and even if you, especially if you have some fish. Right. Do people normally take the water down a little bit or no? Yeah. they. Some okay. people like to drain off a third to make sure. Okay. Um, as long as you've got kind of like an edge, it's not right on, on the edge, the water will freeze and it shouldn't you know burst over or right. do anything like that if you don't have any really good circulation or you're not going to use some sort of heater you can drain it a little bit so let the water expand okay you do want to keep it moving and active and somewhat open as well and deep if you've got fish right yeah your fish need that minimum like two like to a three bubbler feet. or something yeah right and an air stone on the bottom to prevent the ice or floating heater okay. even both is actually more beneficial as well okay don't forget to add some more cold water bacteria. All right. Keep the system going. There is di- different bacteria that work at different times of year and do different things. Okay. And that's just readily available. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you can any like anywhere that sells Aquascape uh, or a local pond store. Okay. Even you, some of your local fish stores, mm-hmm. uh, they will also sometimes carry that sort of oh, good to know. sort of thing for you. Um, yeah. Those are some of the main tips just to kind of keep everything going. And remember not to feed your fish. As it gets cold and the water goes cooler and cooler, the fish kind of start to slow down and they'll feed lightly. But if you put too much food in there, that will throw off the balance as oh, well and okay. can cause some issues. So they almost like a, like a bear or something like they are starting to hibernate, hibernate, aren't they? Like yeah, kind of thing. Like they, they slow, slow down, down. And sink, and get protected and yeah. act very minimally active. Yeah, hmm. and then just making sure that you actually have healthy fish going into the winter. You know, make sure there aren't any diseases like ick or things okay. like that that are affecting them, so that the pond itself. Uh, doesn't go through the winter disease or other issues right. get exaggerated and spread through the winter. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So All just right. a quick thing. And yeah. Yeah. For those of us that or those people that have water features. Right. And ponds. Yeah. I and mean, exactly. If you have water features, make sure you drain them, let them air dry out before you cover them. You want as much of the water as you can and pull your pump out if you can as well. Okay. All yeah. right. Excellent. Um, and speaking of put like other things to drain, so draining our hose, now's the time to kind of, dra- unless you're still watering evergreens, don't right. drain your hoses yet, yes. but, uh, it is the time to kind of drain and store your hoses. Um, and, uh, you know, your, your usual clean and sharpen tools for the winter, that type of thing. It might be a little early for that. That can be kind of like the late November thing yeah. to do. Um, I do think that um, one of my big recommendations for a November task is, and it's still too soon because we were saying the leaves haven't fallen yet, but that is if you have a, a Japanese maple in the last that you've planted this year and last year um, to do the stake it and wrap yes. the stakes with burlap. That's still, you know, till it's about three years established, that's still a really important thing to do. And But you do want the leaves to have fallen. Yeah. And again, you're not doing it super tight so that no snow gets in. The snow load from the top is fine. Moisture from the top is fine. You mm-hmm. want the stakes, you know, a foot or two feet out from the, the tree. It's really to protect that winter wind, right? To right. get that plant established. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that, uh, that's usually my big November. And you can buy the kit where it's already done. The burlap is cut. The stakes are there. The ties are there. It's easy peasy. Yeah, we sell that. It's just a quick pickup. Get yeah, twenty bucks and away you go. Yeah, yeah. excellent, yeah, excellent. Perfect. Yeah, and winterizing again. We were talking about the roses. You know, make sure that we get. You know, the leaves are fallen. There's a good heavy killing frost. I like right. how you use that term before we wrap things. And yeah, you know, same thing with cedars. Burlap onto plants. 
Mm, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We like to wrap them up tight in burlap. Burlap on plants can be very dangerous as well if they sweat or burn or things like that. So that whole staking and building a fort or using things, alternatives like your wilt proof, which is all organic, Mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, definitely. And Connie's written in asking Mm. about anything to do special for her perennials right now. And you and I are both on the same fence as to, you know, really kind of leaving our perennials. Yeah. Um, lots of reasons why. I mean, I think it depends. I know I have some coneflowers and I know it's good to leave the coneflowers, but I have some that are like really tall and falling over. And, and you know, so I want to cut some of those ones back. Yeah. So, Connie, I think if there are things that are like, you know, really uh, um, lang- like rangy or rang- you know, high. And, but other than that, I mean, I think if they create an interesting um, uh, fall interest. Mm-hmm. Um, if they're peonies and they're, the leaves are all moldy, then right. definitely cut them back. But if there's nothing wrong with them, then they're they're a really good place for insects and birds all winter long. Right. Good insects. Um, yeah. So I think it's worth keeping. I think there's bonuses too because in the spring, you don't mistake it for a weed. You know it's a plant. Yep. You know, sometimes when you cut things all the way back, then in the spring you find I've done it too. Like where I've just pulled all this stuff out and I'm like, where did that go? And it's like, oh, that was, you know, oh, it was yeah. a weed. I thought it was a weed. Um, so, so there's a few different reasons why, um, definitely to, and even if you, maybe you don't cut it all the way back, like if you need, do need to trim it, don't cut it all the way to the ground so mm. that then you, there's a little bit more cleanup to do, but there's like good insects that overwinter in those stems. Yep. And, uh, and I don't know if you saw the article I've forwarded you, I found about this lazy gardener pledge, you know, to not like go and clean our garden spick and span, you know? So, um, so yeah, I can't think of anything unless you've got a specific one that you're concerned about, Connie, I can't think of anything that absolutely has to be cut back. Certainly ornamental grasses can stay up. They provide great winter interest. The goldfinches love all the seeds. Um, as they do on the coneflowers and the black eyed Susans, that type of thing. So, uh, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, you you said Did it. I yeah. take the words out of your That's mouth? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I just yeah, when in doubt, don't. And remember, Mother Nature doesn't have a team of magical fairies pruning and cutting everything back, right? Yes. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and if it's anything, only a thing I would say is what we're, we keep saying is if it's anything you've planted recently, um, Connie, it's just to water it. Um, with the exception, I think the only thing to cut back is hostas, you know, because they go y- y- so gross. They and, get gross and, you know, so, uh, so yeah, so that would be the, the one thing type of thing. But other than that, uh, yeah, I think yeah. everything is good. So, and you had a tip. Thank you for your question, Connie. Thank you so oh, yeah. much. And uh, you had a tip for the winter. So, you know, our fall container, all our containers, right? Right. Um, and it's still too soon for the winter because the greens aren't even in stock yet, are they? We got just, like, St- just the beginning of, like, the, okay, a few like the bows just stuff. to kind of yeah. let people know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what was your tip that you were telling me about? Um, yeah, your annual planters. Yes. Yeah. So if you have fall planters or even summer planters, um, in I, containers, in containers mm-hmm. or anything like that, that you like to put your greens in, don't rip out all of the annuals and the soil and start fresh. Just cut down the annuals or whatever you have in them okay. to the ground and use the roots that are all bound in that soil to help brace all your greens. Excellent tip. It'll help freeze it and hold them all upright and you don't have all that loose falling over with the weight of the branches. So Yeah, because sometimes people wonder, that was my question too, is what do you do with that soil? Like people go, like want to dump it out, but where do they, do they dump it in the garden? It's got all that vermiculite in it. Yeah. Do you comp- it's too heavy to go in the paper bags, but really the best thing is to kind of leave it. Yeah, just leave it. Just cut off your annuals to the ground and stick all your branches in for added support. Excellent. Yeah, we love it when we do custom runs like that, and it's just mowed down because it's just so easy. Oh, and good. do people bring them, them to in. you for like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow, that's the great. Odd people will bring them cut there or like fully just like for us to cut. Okay. And then most people bring them like cut down and just yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to so, know. Yeah, a great tip. Yeah. Excellent. I think. <laughs> I know, I know. And birds, we had Lara, we've got a couple minutes left, barely, but uh, don't forget about uh, the <laughs> birds. I know we haven't had a show recently about bird feeding, but mm. uh, now is a good time to, you know, wash out your, from your summer feed and anything right. like kind of prep that. I know I have, um, I need to plug it in. I have a little winter, um, one of those uh, bird baths that I can plug in. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So it'll keep water for them in the winter. Yes. That type of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And if you love birds in the winter, the birds with all the frozen ice and snow, birds really are attracted to an open water source Mm. because they still have to drink. So if you can get some open water somehow, 
they will love your yard. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's yeah. good. Good. Yeah. So, yeah, lots to talk about. Uh, I mean, I think we covered a lot. We, I mean, again, some repeats from what we covered in October. Some repeats. Yeah, definitely. But we want to thank everybody for uh, writing in. Yeah. And uh, we've got a couple more shows left in our season. So we're excited. We um, so next week, or no, not next week. So, yeah, next week. Next week. You're doing a solo show. Solo. I'm on holidays. Yeah. I'm going to talk everything about... Uh, Brace yourself, everybody. Brace. I know. It's, it's, and I apologize. Tomorrow's Halloween. That's right. <laughs> but we are going to talk Christmas trees. Christmas trees. Artificial and real. Artificial and real. The difference is the benefits, you know, yes. what's out there. Yeah. And I know there's lots of um, misconceptions about the art, the new artificial trees and stuff. So I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, what you tell everybody about yeah. uh, all those misnomers out there. <laughs> Um, so that is great. So I think that'll be a great show. Yeah. I know it's early, but then then you have the information if you're looking for a new tree or if you're trying to decide what to do, um, artificial, yeah. real, that type of thing. So I think it's better to have the information earlier versus later. You right? got it. So I'm sure you and Gary are going to have lots of fun with that show. We <laughs> Get your questions ready, Gary. <laughs> I already do. Okay, good. <laughs> good. And then on November 13th, um, we have Daniel back. He was from Harris Seeds. He was here. I'm um, talking about seeds <laughs> and but he also mentioned that he was part of the woof program w-w-o-o-f and I won't I don't remember what those stand for <laughs> do you remember <laughs> no or yeah world yeah anyway we're going to learn all about this program for anybody out there who wants to travel and loves working in the garden I think this is a really cool program and he had a wonderful experience and it's kind of led his changed his career path and uh, so I'm really looking forward to hearing more about that program. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, there's not much left in the garden for us to do, but we wanted to bring you, we still want to bring you some interesting topics and uh, educational, you know, like we said, we learn, we're right with you, right? Yeah. If we knew everything, it wouldn't be any fun anymore. That's right. That's right. It's going to give us something to do in November <laughs> to research, research some of this stuff. So, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. He's yeah, a great guest. Too. Might be packing my bags right after that show. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> there, there you go. Taking down to down the garden path on the road. Yeah. And that's right. Matthew, so, live from Australia. That's right. So, uh, so yeah. So, thank you, everybody, once again, for listening to another episode. Um, yeah. <laughs> and Q. And Q. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> oh, I just say, and I'm Matthew Dressing here with uh, Joanne, Joanne Shaw. Shaw. On Reality Radio 101, thank you for listening to Down the Garden Path. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101.